Hi, I'm Paul Kyogen from GK Tuition, and in this video I want to talk to you about trigonometry and area volume and measurement. Now the question I've chosen to go through here is 2019 paper 2 question 7. In the first part of this question we're discussing a cattle trough. We're told that the cattle trough is 2.5 meters long and that the side, the shape of the side of the cattle trough is a segment of a circle. So say this this section here from A to B to C to D, that section is the side of the cattle trough. We're told that this segment of this circle, that the radius of the circle was 90 centimeters. So the cattle trough was cut from what was a circle that had a radius of 90 centimeters. The key to that is that obviously that means the distance OA, OB and OC, they're all radii. So since they told me that OA is 90 centimeters, I also know that the distance from O to B is 90 centimeters, the distance from O to C is 90 centimeters. Now the first part of this question, it asked me to work out the distance from A to D and leave my answer in the form of A root B. Now you should realize because I know all these, these three lines are, are 90 centimeters each, they've mentioned to me that the distance from D to B is 30 centimeters. That's given in my diagram and mentioned in the question. If the distance from D to B is 30 centimetres and the whole distance from O to B is 90 centimetres, then clearly if we subtract the two, I know that the distance from O to D must be 60 centimetres. And at this point, happy days, because they mentioned as well that this is a right angle, that OB is perpendicular to AC. So if you just look at the triangle OAD, it's a right angle triangle, I know two sides, so I can find the third side. If I just use Pythagoras theorem, I'll be able to work out the distance AD. Now remember your Pythagoras theorem is A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, where C is the hypotenuse, or in other words, C is the side opposite the right angle. In this case, the C is 90 centimeters, because 90 centimeters is opposite the right angle. The other two sides involved in this triangle are the side OD, which I know is 60 centimeters, and the side AD, which is the one that I'm looking for. So I can say that AD squared plus 60 squared is equal to 90 squared. Now I've got one equation, one unknown, which means I can find the distance AD. So in this case, AD to be squared is just AD squared, I can't do anything with it. 60 to be squared is 3600, and 90 to be squared is 8,100. So clearly if I want to get AD, if I'm trying to find AD, I first need to get AD squared on its own. So if I subtract 3,600 from both sides, the left becomes 8,100 minus 3,600. If you plug that into your calculator, you get 4,500. So I know that AD squared is equal to 4,500. Clearly if I've got AD squared, I need to get the square root of both sides. So if you plug that into your calculator, AD works out as 30 root 5. And the question, the 90 was in centimetres, the 60 was in centimetres, so clearly my answer needs to be in centimetres as well. I can say that AD is equal to 30 root 5 centimetres. In the second part of this question, we're asked to find the angle DOA in radians. Now, if we're looking for the angle DOA, you'll notice that I've marked it in here, then clearly we're dealing with the same triangle as we dealt with in A part one. At this stage now, I have a right angle triangle and I know all three sides of it. So if you know all three sides of a triangle, you could use the cosine rule to work out the angle. But because it's a right angle triangle, it's far easier to use junior cert trigonometry here. I can just use my sine, cos or tan ratios. It doesn't really matter which one. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use cos. I know that the cos of any angle, the cos of the angle DOA is the, is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So in this case, if I look at my right angle triangle, clearly adjacent to my angle is the side that's 60 centimeters. And the hypotenuse of that triangle is 90. So I can say the cos of the angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or in other words, 60 over 90. Now the question said to get it in radians, so you have to be sure that your calculator is in radians. And in order to get the angle on its own, you need to bring the cos to the other side, or in other words, it needs to become cos inverse. And rather than writing this as 60 over, over 90, that's the same as 2 over 3. 
So I can just simplify it like that. If we plug this straight into our calculator, ensuring our calculator is in radians, the question asked me to leave my answer to two decimal places. So your final answer to two decimal places is 0 0.84 radians. So you get the marks for that. Okay, in A part three, we're asked to work out the area of the segment ABC. Now you should realize the segment ABC, it's an obscure shape. There's no formula for getting the area of that shape. It's not a semicircle. It's only a little portion of a circle. So it's impossible for us to directly get the area of ABC. What we can do is we can get the area of the whole thing, which is the sector of a circle, and we can then subtract the area of the triangle OAC. So basically we get the area of the whole thing, we subtract the area of the triangle on top, and then we're left with the, with the bit that we're looking for. We're left with the segment ABC. Now there's a couple of things you have to notice. It's asked me to leave my answer to two decimal places. It's asked me to leave my answer in meters squared. And it's asked me to, and um, we have to remember we're dealing with radians as well. We've worked out this angle in radians. So the first thing I want to do is get the area of the sector, which is the whole shape, the whole thing, or it's like a pizza slice coming out. It's like a pizza slice coming out of a pizza. The formula for this is in your log tables. There's a formula for degrees and there's a formula for radians. Because we worked out the angle DOA in radians, it means we need to use the formula for the area of a sector in radians. And that's given in our log tables as a half times R squared times theta, where theta is the angle at the center of the sector. So in order to work this out, it's relatively straightforward. The radius of this sector is 90 centimeters. We were told that at the start of the question. I need to get my answer in meters which means that instead of using 90 centimeters, 90 divided by 100 is 0 0.9. 90 centimeters is equivalent to 0 0.9 meters. Now to get theta, theta is the angle at the center. And remember that in, the, in A part two, we worked out that this angle here is 0 0.84 radians. Clearly this is a perfectly symmetrical shape. So if the angle DOA is 0 0.84, then the whole entire angle, AOC, the whole angle, we just multiply our answer to A part two, we multiply it by two. So our previous angle was 0 0.84. If I multiply that by two, I get 1.68. I know that that angle is 1.68 radians. So I've, this is a half and this is R squared times theta. If I just plug it all into my calculator, I can work out that the area of my sector in meters squared is 0 0.6804. Notice I'm leaving it to four decimal places, even though my answer only needs to be to two decimal places, because I want to make sure that I don't round off too soon. So that's the area of our sector. Now we need to get the area of the triangle. The easiest way to get the area of the triangle OAC is to use the formula that it's a half the base multiplied by the perpendicular height. So it's just half multiplied by the base multiplied by the perpendicular height. The base in this case is the distance AC. The perpendicular height in this case is the distance DO. Now I, I know both of those distances already. In the first part of the question, we worked out the distance AD was 30 root five. Again, it's a perfectly symmetrical shape. So clearly to get the distance from A to C, I just multiply by th my 30 root five by two twice 30, that just gives me 60 root five. So I know the base is 60 root five. But remember that that is in centimeters. That's 60 root five centimeters. And I need to get my answer in meters. So in order to get your answer in meters, you need to divide by 100. So instead of writing it as 60 root five centimeters, 60 divided by 100 is 0 0.6. So rather than using 60 root five, I can write it as 0 0.6 root five. In other words, I just got the 60 and divided it by 100. 0 0.6 root five, that's in meters now. So it's a half multiplied by the base, multiplied by the perpendicular height. The perpendicular height in this case is the distance from D to O, which is 60 centimeters. And if I convert that to meters, that's the equivalent to 0 0.6. So a half multiplied by the base, multiplied by the perpendicular height, that tells me that the area of my triangle is 0 
So happy days, once I have these two values, once I have these two areas, if I just subtract the two areas, that will give me my final answer. The entire shape minus the, the triangle OAC will leave me with the, with the shape or the segment ABC. So in that case, if I just get 0 0.6804 and I subtract 0 0.40249, my final answer works out as 0 0.28 meters squared. And that's what you're getting the full marks for in this part of the question. Okay, for the fourth part of A, we're asked to find the volume of the trough in meters cubed correct to two decimal places. Now, a very common mistake a lot of leave inserts made this year was they thought that it was just half of a cylinder. You could get the volume of a cylinder and just get half of it. But remember that ABC is not half of a cylinder. It's only the segment of a circle. So this is like a makey uppy shape. You've never come across a shape like this before. So you need to be able to figure out how to find the volume of this shape. In order to do that, you should realize that the, the volume of any shape, it's nearly always the same. Let's take, for example, a cylinder, okay? The volume of a cylinder, we can derive the volume of a cylinder. The volume of a cylinder, it's, it's pi or squared h. It's given in your log tables as pi or squared h. Even if it wasn't given in your log tables, you should be able to figure it out. Because the volume of a 3D shape, it's the base multiplied by the height. That's basically the volume of any shape. The base multiplied by the height. Once the, once the shape, the base and the top are the same shape, the volume of any 3D shape is the base multiplied by the height. For example here, the volume of a cylinder is, it's the area of a circle, which is pi or squared, multiplied by the height, which is the height of your cylinder. So the volume of a cylinder is just the area of a circle, pi or squared, that's the base, and then you multiply that by the height. And that's a good rule of thumb for, any, for the vast majority of 3D shapes. So with that in mind, let's consider the shape we have here. ABC, the, the shape at one end of it is the exact same as the other, which means that in order to get the volume of this shape, all it is, is it's the base multiplied by the height, or in this case, the base by the length of it. We worked out in A part three that the area of ABC, which we could consider to be the base, the area of ABC is 0 0.28 meters squared. And we were told at the start of the question that the length of this or the height of this shape is 2.5 meters. So it starts off at 0 0.28 meters and it goes for two and a half meters. So I just multiply by the height, 0 0.28 multiplied by 2.5. Your final answer there is just 0 0.70 meters cubed. And that's all we need to do for the volume. Okay, in B part one of this question, we're dealing with a sand timer. We're told that the upper half of the sand timer is full of sand and that the shape of the upper half is a hemisphere, a cylinder and a cone. We're asked to find the volume of sand in the timer, or in other words, find the volume of these three shapes added together. We're asked to leave our answer in centimeters cubed to two decimal places. Well, I've no issue with the units because all of my measurements were given in centimeters cubed, but you have to be very careful with the decimals here. A lot of students ended up with the wrong answer because they rounded off too early. If you don't get each of your, each of your individual volumes to four decimal places, when you add them together, you end up with the wrong answer. So as a general rule of thumb, if you're asked to leave things to two decimal places, you make sure for the, for, the rest, for, the other, for the previous parts of the question, you keep everything to four or even five decimal places. To get the volume of a hemisphere, well in the log tables it tells me how to get the volume of a sphere is four over three pi r cubed. Obviously then a hemisphere is half of that, so it's two over three pi r cubed. The radius is 1.25, so your volume works out as 4.0906. The volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. I've been given the radius, I've been given the height, so your volume works out as 17.1806 centimeters cubed. The volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. Again, I know all the dimensions, so it works out as 2.4544. When we add these three, so what I've done on the right hand side here is I've added these three values together. It works out as 23.7256, which means when you round it to two decimal places, it rounds up to 23.73 centimeters cubed. 
So your final answer for that one is 23.73 centimeters cubed. In the final part of this question, we're told that sand flows from the upper half into the lower half and that we're asked to find the height of the sand in the cone when 98% of the sand has, flowed into, has flown into the lower half. In other words, 2% of the sand remains in the cone. We worked out in B part 1 that the volume of sand is 23.73 centimeters cubed. So what I've done here is I've worked out what is 2% of that. You multiply by 0 0.02 and you get 0 0.4746. This corresponds to the volume of sand remaining in, in this part of the question. So I know the volume of sand is, is 0.4746. And they told me that this, that this is a completely flat, that it's completely flat at the top. In other words, they're telling you that the volume of the sand is this and the shape of the sand is a cone. So the shape of the sand is a cone and I know its volume. So clearly I'm dealing with the formula for the volume of a cone. The formula for the volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h. And I know that the volume of sand is 0 0.4746. So I can just plug in and say, right, that 0 0.4746, or in other words, the volume is equal to one third times pi times r squared times h. Now in this question, we're looking for the value of h. Clearly, this is one equation and two unknowns. So as it stands, this is impossible. And this is where a lot of students got caught out this year. But you have to realize, like, just look at the diagrams they've given you. Like, why on earth would they have given you this diagram unless you actually needed to use it? So this diagram was a giveaway of what we need to do for the next step. When you get here, you should identify that it's gonna be impossible to find H or R because there's two unknowns in one equation. I need to work out what R is relative to H or what h is relative to or, so that I can sub it in and work out one of my values. Now you need to realize that the diagram they've given you, they've given you two similar triangles. The similar triangles are the first triangle is the distance from the corner to the center and then down here. That's one of your triangles. I know that the, that the top of that triangle is 1.25 and that the height of that triangle is 1.5. The other similar triangle, as the sand just lowers and lowers and lowers, another similar triangle is the distance or down to the distance h and then back up here. So we're dealing with two similar triangles. And if you've revised your geometry, you'll know that once you have similar triangles, the sides are proportional to each other. So I can say that the top of the large triangle, which is 1.25, divided by the height of the large triangle, which is, e which is 1.5, is equal to the top of the smaller triangle, which is or, divided by the height of the small triangle, which is h. Remember, all I'm doing there is you've done it 100 times in your similar triangles. It's just that side over that side is the same as this over this. Because they're similar triangles, or in other words, because all the angles in those two triangles are the same. Now I'm happy out. If you look back here, clearly I want to find a value for h. So I want to end up with h on its own, which means I need to eliminate the or from this equation. If I want to eliminate the or from this equation, that means I want to get or on its own over here. In order to do that, the easiest thing to do is to just multiply both sides by h. If I multiply both sides by h, I get or is equal to 1.25 h over 1.5. Once I know that or is equal to that, I can now just sub in, instead of or, I can sub this in into my original equation. So if we come back here, 0 0.4746 is now equal to 1 third times pi, and instead of or squared, it's just 1.25h over 1.5 to be squared. And then at the very end, I'm multiplying that by h. And happy days now, one equation, one unknown. I just need to manipulate this and I can find the value of h. Okay, so here all I'm doing is I'm just, I'm just manipulating it down. I've got one equation, I've got one unknown, so I just need step by step to simplify it. What I did on the first line is to try and get rid of this one third, I multiply both sides by three, which means the left becomes three times what we already had. And I also squared the bracket. 1.25 squared gives me this value, 1.5 squared gives me that, and h squared is just a h squared. 
What I did on the next line now, I wanted to get rid of this pi on the right, so I divided both sides by pi. 3 multiplied by that worked out as 1.4238, and now it's divided by pi. And to multiply these by each other, you just multiply the h by 1.5625 h squared, so it becomes the same number h cubed over 2.25. Now what I wanted to do was to get rid of my fraction. And in order to do that, I want to multiply both sides by 2.25. When I plug this into my calculator, I got 0 0.4532, and it's now multiplied by 2.25. The, the right-hand side is straightforward enough now. Divide both sides by 1.5625, and I end up with h cubed is equal to this value. Obviously, if h cubed is equal to that, I want to get the cubic root of both sides. So the cubic root of this will be equal to h. And if you plug that into your calculator, h works out as 0 0.87 centimeters. And remember, the question asked me to leave it to two decimal places. So that's my final answer in that case. Now, I hope all of this video makes sense. But as always, if you're unsure or you want me to explain it differently, let me know in class or send me an email and I'll try and clarify it for you.